Welcome to my channel. Every decade presents its own set of challenges, but the onset of a new decade adds a whole new level of complexity. Turning 30 might be gloomy and stressful if you thought you had nailed the dating game in your 20s. For the most part, the dating scene when you are 30 years old is very different from when you were in your early 20s. Despite the drawbacks, there are significant advantages. As a result of these changes, the playing field has narrowed, making it more difficult for you to get ahead. If you've been hurt in the past, you may have trust concerns, or you may be more committed than ever to your career. If you have fewer single acquaintances, the pressure to get married will be even greater. You have greater life experience, however. You've likely determined what you want to focus on in life, where you want to live, whether you want children, etc. Rather than dating for the sake of dating, it is more probable that you would seek out a mate who shares your goals and way of life. According to the popular author and relationship guru Jordan Gray, dating in your 20s can be like the dispersed light of a disco ball, whereas dating in your 30s is more like a focused laser beam. You'll waste less time on relationships that aren't worthwhile if you know what you're looking for and be much more quickly and easily able to optimize for healthy, aligned interactions. If you've recently been single or have reached the age of 30 and are seeing how dating has changed, don't worry. We've assembled some critical tips from an expert to ensure your success when dating in your 30s. Number 1. Make a list of what you desire. You might want a partner in your mid-twenties who drives a nice car and can afford to take you to a nice restaurant. Although those things are wonderful, once you reach your thirties, you will most likely want more from a partner. In your twenties, you may be more prone to dating people for the experience who are outside of your default dating preferences, Gray says. However, all of your previous dating experiences really pay off in your 30s. Now is the perfect moment to think about what you want in a companion, if you haven't already. Create a list of the names of your most recent dates. Next to each person's name, list the top 5 qualities you liked and disapproved of about them. Take note of any repeating trends. You should focus on the facets of your future partnership that you found most alluring. Number 2. Embrace the present and let the past go. Numerous singles in their 30s have suffered heartbreak in the form of ghosting, adultery, a breakup, or even divorce. It is essential to keep in mind that we all have skeletons in our closets and that our experiences have created who we are today. Although your past has influenced you, it does not have to determine your present or future. Instead, pay attention to what is happening right now and your next steps. In order to grow and rehabilitate, Grace says that all of our former relationships and their partners are allies. Number 3. Take a risk and be vulnerable. Your innate defense mechanism when you've had a succession of failed relationships is to become more vigilant. If you don't let anyone in, you won't get hurt, right? But as you are undoubtedly aware, you won't find the one if you don't let anyone in. You should let your guard down after you establish a relationship with someone. Make an effort to be seen. The good news is that you're in your 30s now and have thicker skin. If something doesn't work out, it was never meant to. What counts is how eager you are to take a chance. Number 4. Positive thinking is better than negative thinking. Marriage, or even a long-term romance, may seem like a pipe dream if you've had a string of failed relationships but it's critical not to let your negative thoughts get the best of you. If you catch your mind spinning its wheels in the mud of your anxiety, Gray adds, you may just acknowledge it with compassion and pick a new thought. Give someone a chance when you meet them, and don't let failure make you a hermit. Gray says, at the end of the day, 
We want a sense of control over our lives, yet we have very little. He says, we may constantly try to act consciously, but sometimes the item we're trying to grab is beyond our grasp because something bigger is coming. Number 5. Do not hurry. Getting fixated on what you lack is easy. You're not married, you don't have kids, and you haven't yet found the one. It is acceptable to desire all of these qualities, but it is improper to scrutinize every potential partner to see if they meet your standards. When it comes to picking a relationship, fear and shortage are typically not good psychological forces, argues Gray. Enjoy yourself while getting to know the individual. The finish line should not feel rushed. Some individuals marry and have children at the age of 20, while others marry and have children in their 40s or 50s. Who therefore knows what the future holds? Number 6. Don't be biased against divorce. Even though South Africa's divorce rate is dropping, it is acceptable to date divorced people in their 30s. It's acceptable to be jealous of your new partner's ex-spouse or to contrast yourself with her. One approach to get over jealousy of an ex-spouse, according to Gray, is to remember how that person shaped your partner into the person they are now. Dating a divorcee has the benefit of allowing you to benefit from their previous marriage's lessons, which you can then use to your new relationship. Your partner's ex-spouse, and all of their prior relationships, helped mold them into the version that you are now enjoying being close to, according to Gray, who claims that we are all ongoing works in progress. Number 7. Open your mind to a wider age range. Is age really a factor? The two are not even in the same ballpark, the acceptable age range for a future marriage is somewhat greater when it comes to dating in your 30s, Gray argues. It all comes down to maturity levels and life goals being in sync. If you think someone is too old or young for you, don't dismiss them out of hand. Love, mutual support, and a desire for the same things out of life and a partnership are the ingredients for a long-lasting connection. Number 8. Dating someone you're not really into is not a good idea. Keep your distance if you don't like someone, don't communicate with them, don't text or meet up with them. Life is too short to waste. Instead of spending time with someone you don't think you'll see again, wouldn't it be better to catch some shut-eye? Dating becomes significantly more effective in your 30s because you know what to optimize for, Gray explains. Utilize this to your advantage by avoiding partnerships that lead nowhere. Number 9. Transparency in Communication In every relationship, communication is vital. When dating in your 30s, you and your partner should be able to talk openly and truthfully with one another. Have you fought your first battle? Discuss it intelligently. It is likely that you will not communicate later in the relationship if you do not communicate early on. Number 10. Do you. In order to meet someone special or accommodate a new companion, don't sacrifice your identity. In your 30s, finding time to date can be challenging, and if you want to make it a priority, you'll probably have to put other things on hold. In contrast, there may be instances when you need to put dating on hold in order to accomplish other objectives. According to Gray, the only thing that matters is that one pays attention to their fundamental truth and then prioritizes that truth by taking continuous action. Number 11. You shouldn't settle for less, but you shouldn't seek perfection either. No one should settle for a spouse in whom they simply have a passing interest. The partnership will not be enduring or healthy. People in their 30s, especially women who wish to have children, frequently experience anxiety at the idea of not settling down soon enough. Some people will settle for a less-than-ideal companion in order to feel safe. 
as opposed to trying to have biological children with a partner you do not feel profoundly aligned with. Gray advises grounding yourself in the thought that it may be more true for you to wait until you find the right person and adopt children with them. But you shouldn't hold off until everything is perfect. Compromise is a key component of relationships, and you must be able to accept others for who they are, flaws and all. Thank you for watching.